Hello my DIY friends out there on the internet. Hey Jeff here again and today we have a video that we're going to show you how to install a dishwasher and we're going to show you how to do it right so that you don't violate your building codes at the same time. So let's get right into it. So we're looking at the side of the dishwasher. Here's the front here, and here's the back. So you can see why they, they have that block out there on the, on the back of the, the cabinet there on the side at the bottom by the floor that says you can only go up seven and three quarter inches because they only want you to pass stuff back and forth through here. They don't want you putting anything up there. You're out of luck. So everything has to be done down here. So we have to transfer that measurement, seven and three quarter inches, over there on the cabinet side off the floor. And so there we are, about seven and three quarter inches there to the bottom of the blue tape. But remember, you don't get all of that because the cabinet actually sits up about four, four and a half inches. So you're really only gonna get about three inches or so of useful space up there. So inside the cabinet then at the bottom, see that back plate there? That's about three inches tall. So I'm gonna have to confine my holes that pass the hoses and the electrical cable between the cabinet and the dishwasher. I have to confine them to that height in that back corner back there. Every dishwasher has one of these drain hoses that goes and connects to your garbage disposal on the cabinet there, right? And before you connect this up to your garbage disposal, there's a plug inside that port there that you gotta knock out with a screwdriver and a hammer. If you fail to knock that out, all the water will continue to back up inside your dishwasher and it will fill at the bottom and you'll be wondering, hey, why is water collecting at the bottom of my dishwasher? Okay, so. What we're going to do is I always put down a big huge cloth here and I tend to do things a little bit different than what they tell you to do in the instruction manual because they want you to install the whole dishwasher and then lay there prone on your stomach and reach in underneath and try to do that wiring. That's just crazy. So what I do is we bring up the big carpet here and we just spin it around. We gently lower it on its back. It's perfectly safe to do that. Once it's up on its back, you can see right down here, the electric box is exposed here. This is what we need to get at here. Okay, so we're just going to unscrew this plate here so that we can get at the wiring and the little lid that's on there. Okay, so here I'm going to take my uh, quarter inch nut driver here, and they have a screw here. Now you can either use a Phillips head or the quarter inch nut driver, and anytime I'm given the choice, I always go with the nut driver. I've got it. So you pull the screw out, and then this lid just comes right up. Okay. This green screw right here is going to be for our ground wire. The whole thing here. Okay, so as you know, the, the dishwashers don't come with a power cable, so you have to buy a separate power cable. And you make sure that you get a three prong cable like this. It's got three prongs, and it should have three wires coming out of it. It should have a black wire, a white wire, and a, a green wire there. So the green wire is the ground, the black wire is the hut, and the white wire is the neutral. 
Okay, so when we go to hook this up here, the green wire is going to connect here to this green screw. The black wire is going to connect up to the black wire there. And the white wire is going to connect up to the white wire. Okay, so now um, we're going to pull this wire out here momentarily. Because I want to show you this hole right here next to the green screw here. And you can see that's a sharp edge there. So building codes require that whenever you're running a uh, wire through something like that, that you use one of these connectors here. This is a little, um, non metal cable connector. And we usually use this for running Romex into your outlet boxes and um, going through um, you know, the metal. Anytime you've got a hole in a metal wire, it's sharp like that. So what you have to do then is. We're going to run the cable here, like that, the connector, and then the nut goes down here, like that. And I'm not going to fully tighten it yet. And you want to station it so that the you can still get at the screw heads down below here easily from the front. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to feed the power cable up here through the, the cable clamp right there and feed it up into here. Okay, so I've exposed a little bit more of the wire so we'll have a little more room to play with there. And what I do is I twist them together to run them up as one through the cable connector there. See? So it goes up a lot easier. And you really don't need to make it go in that far, just enough to get at what you need to get at. And so we're gonna do the ground screw first here. And when you're doing this and you're wrapping wire around a screw, you always want to wrap clockwise. See that? That direction there? The reason is, is if it was going the other way, and I'm going to put this under that washer there. If this was going the other way and you go to tighten the screw, it'll actually just keep unraveling the wire on you. So I'm going to make sure he's nice and twisted there. And let's go ahead and get this on there. Yeah, for these little green ground screws, it's always best to use the 5 16 inch nut driver. It's way easier than doing the Phillips head. Okay, so now we're grounded. And now we're going to take our other two wires here and run them in. Now I'm going to show you two different ways we can connect these wires together. We're going to use we're going to use here two different types. So I have, this is our standard wiring nut. And then these here, are, I've been using a lot lately. I really like these. These are the Wago uh, wiring lever nuts here. So the way this works is you stick the first wire in there, close it down so it's locked onto that black wire. And you take the second black wire here, stick it into the other side, close that lever down, and that's it, that's all you gotta do. You don't have to twist, play games, you don't have to strip any extra wire other than what's there, it just works perfectly. Okay, so now we're going to show you the other way we do it. Okay, so I had to strip a little more wire off of this one, because you need to be able to twist these two together before you put on the wiring nut here. So I'm going to simply twist them up. up a little with the pliers, my lineman's pliers. And you take the wiring nut and you screw it on there. Okay. So now we've completed our electrical connection here with the dishwasher. Now you're probably wondering, hey, why don't you need to put a clamp connector we don't need one on this side because they put a little smoothing ring inside there, so that, that side's safe. Okay, so let's 
fold that up nice and gentle there. Put the box back on. And we'll just run the screw back in. Okay, so all the parts and stuff, the tools that we use here, I'll try to put links to everything down in the description for you so you'll be able to find them. Okay, so this is uh, something you have to buy whenever you buy a dishwasher. Don't forget, you're not just buying the machine, they don't give you the power cord or the, the water supply hose either. So you have to buy what we call here, this is a universal connector kit. So what this does is this comes with a hose and it usually has a couple of different parts that will help you mate up to whatever type of connector you have. Now I know already that we have to connect up to this part right here. So we're going to use this bigger 93 elbow right Okay, so remember the kit comes with a few pieces, so this is the piece we need. So this just screws in. You don't have to put any Teflon tape on there because there's a gasket in there. hand tighten it and then I'll go an extra quarter of a turn. Okay, so there's that. Right there. And then we're gonna attach it right there like they say. We're just tighten it on just like a regular hose bib. You go hand tighten as far as you can go. And then you go about a half a turn beyond that. And that should be good enough. Now I want to point out to you, see I'm doing it backwards from the way they tell you to do it in the instructions. Because again, they tell you in the instructions to run the hose first all the way back in there and they want you to tape it down to the floor. But the problem is, is Again, you're going to be on your face trying to hook all of this stuff up, you know, when you're at a complete mechanical disadvantage. And it's so much easier to do it all when you have it just like this. So you've done it enough times, it's pretty easy, and you won't have any problems. Yeah. Okay, so to drill the holes, I prefer to use my little hole saws here. These are perfect for wood here. And so they want me to use the 2-inch. Okay, so when you're using the 2-inch one, let's see if this fits. So you just screw this right on there, and this is going to attach right to the drill. That's it. That's all you got to do. Okay, so notice how this works is it has the drill bit in the middle first. So this works best to stabilize it and give you the perfect hole, because you start with the center tap drill bit, and that drill bit just starts a pilot hole for you, that keeps this thing steady, it keeps it from rocking side to side while it's spinning so that these can finally get a grip and dig into the wood and make a nice smooth cut. So let's get this first hole in. Okay, so now for uh electrical plug to see how big a hole to drill. I just take it and fit it right into one of the hole saw bits. So this will be the size hole that we drill here. Supply hose and this is the drain hose. And we're going to run them through our big hole that we made. And then the power cord here will go through the other one. Alright, 
So what I did real quick was I just wanted to push the dishwasher into place and just kind of gauge whether it's high enough up to meet the counter, the bottom of the counter here. And as it turns out, no, it is not. So what we have to do is we have to jack it up. It looks like about an inch so that these will be sort of touching the bottom of the counter when you push in the dishwasher. Okay. And then if you look here, you can see the, the granite guys did a great job here. What they did was they buried a, a wood strip in there for us to screw into. So that's kind of cool. Sometimes you don't get that. Sometimes the granite guys will uh, glue a piece of wood on, you know, that hangs down, you know. But this one here is really nice. It's, they, they embedded it right into the bottom side of the granite countertop there. So what we have to do then is jack it up. And the way we jack it up, is you have these screws down at the bottom here. There's one here on the front there. So you see how to get the feet there? And so we're going to have to turn those counterclockwise. There's one there, and there's one on the front there, and then way in the back. See so if we can zoom in there. Way in the back, there's the other one. See, there's the rear one. So you jack them all up to the same height. We're gonna jack this thing up about one inch. Now the thing that stinks about these, and all the manufacturers, you know, I hate the way they do this. That's a really, really tiny um, hex head there, and so that's actually a five thirty seconds. So you got to make sure you have a five thirty seconds inch socket, and that's why I use this. Is I love this tool. This was one of the best things I ever bought. It's a motorized socket wrench, and so you. It allows you to get into these tight spaces to make those adjustments down there, see? So that's what we're going to be doing is putting the socket on there to make that adjustment. Okay, now alternatively, if you don't have that socket, you can use a wrench at the bottom there, right down here, and start unscrewing the bottom foot there. The only problem is it's difficult to get a wrench under that tight space. Somebody's going to have to hold this up for you while you get under it and then once you get it started with your hand you're okay but um it's just a pain and you know by the way just to be more efficient you know you didn't have to wait like I did and you know push the dishwasher in but you're better off just measuring this height when you have the dishwasher out and then measure the height of the counter calculate the distance and then just preset all your legs and everything the first time while you have your dishwasher out on the main part of the floor Okay, so the way this works now is you take the socket there and stick it right on top of it. Jack it up about an inch. You just have to do that to all of the other ones. Okay, now I want it to be level front to back and side to side. So what I'll do is I'll loosen it back up a little bit till the thing levels out. Right there, see that? So that's all I have to do. You just adjust them until your spirit level reads perfectly level from front to back and we'll do the other side too. We check the other side here and it's pretty close to level. Okay, so now we put the level on the front there and we can see it's perfect from side to side. So now I know this thing is nice level plumb true and all that. And you'll know it too because if it isn't, when you go to slide it in, you'll see the difference between the door here as it lines up to your cabinet. So everything in this kitchen was designed to be perfectly plumb and square. If one item is out of place, you'll know it later and you'll have to start playing with your legs down at the bottom there to adjust your dishwasher to be a little crooked if you want it to look lined up to the cabinets if the cabinets are crooked but everything looks good so far okay so now we will take this hot water hose here and we'll attach it over to the hot water cutoff valve there so you can see 
Um, let me get closer here for you. Typically what I do is I, I get these really nice double valve setups here. So this one goes to the hot water faucet up above on the sink. And this one here is for the dishwasher. So the benefit of this is I can independently shut off the water flow going to the dishwasher or to the, uh, to the faucet or to both. So this is a great flexible part. These are about uh, $15, $20. I'll put a link down in the description for you because these are really very useful valves to have. Alright, so I will usually tighten these by hand and then I go about another half a turn with the pliers. So now we can turn on the water, go into the dishwasher. that there's no leaks there so now the sink has water going to the faucet and the dishwasher has hot water through the supply line okay so now I want to show you something that's very very important related to safety health codes building codes and all that and I want to show you this so this is the mistake everybody makes when they connect up their washer, their uh, the dishwasher. They pull in the the, uh, the drain hose, right, from the dishwasher, and they proceed to just go right up here and plug it into the side of the, the garbage disposal, and they think that's okay. Now let me just back up here for a second. And let's, let's just stare at this and let's take a look at this and see why this is wrong and why it's a violation of health code and why the building codes don't allow it either. So if you look here, if you were to turn on the, the garbage disposal and let's say the food in there is flying around and everything, and if it ends up in here, it could end up down here and work its way into, down below, down into the dishwasher. And then you'll have all of this, this water and sewage backing up inside the bottom of your dishwasher. And that could cause huge, huge health problems. Furthermore, Supposing you had a sewage backup here, and the sewage backup comes up in here, and it gets inside your garbage disposal, goes up here, pops out here, and then it goes down, and now you have a sewage backup going into your dishwasher. You think that won't happen to you? I've seen it happen three times in the last couple of years where the sewage system backed up, simply because you can get clogs down the line from all the idiots that keep throwing chicken fat down into the line there and it eventually backs up here and it backs up into your sink drain right there too so I've seen that happen happen to me in one of my units a couple of years ago all right so you never want to do it like this okay what the building codes require is what's called a high side loop you're probably wondering what the heck is a high side loop what do we do with that all right so let me show you so what the building department wants you to do is this they want you to take this hose Run it all the way up the inside here, as high as it can go, all the way up to the top, right? So it's got to be higher than the bottom of the, the sink here, right? And then you can come down and bring it around, and it would plug in here, and you, you'd have a hose clamp here. But you can see the difference here, and you'll see it more once we have it hooked up, but I'm just trying to demonstrate for you that now the path would be the water would have to go uphill, which it probably can't, and then down. Then it would have to go down, you know, next door to the dishwasher. So it has a much harder time doing that. And if you had a backup from your sewage, the sewage would back up and it would just come up the drain instead of going up your hose, which is going to be way up there. So this is called a high side loop. And I'll show you a quick diagram of it. See, most people never read the directions thoroughly, but the instructions are in all of the directions. So you see how they show it happening there? So they show it coming from the dishwasher, and then it gets, you use a bracket there and you tie it, the hose as high as it can go, which is typically 32 inches to the bottom of the counter, and then it comes down to the garbage disposal. So that's called the high side loop, and right there it can, it, you can see the instructions say the drain hose loop must be at least 32 inches high from the floor to ensure proper drainage. 
So that way when when the dishwasher pumps out the water, all the waste, it's going to come here and it'll pump it up. It has enough strength to pump it up and back down. But sewage will not be able to come back up this way, reverse. So in a way it almost acts like a P-trap. It's kind of a, a similar in in strategy of what they're trying to do. They're trying to protect you from the sewage whereas a P-trap is trying to protect you from the gases coming up from the sewer system. Okay so here's where there's proof. People always um, try to challenge us so here I wanted to show you where it shows it in the code here. Now here in our 2017 Florida building code here uh, which is based on the uniform plumbing codes that's used around the country here it says here in 802.1.6 domestic dishwashing machines and it gives you three possible scenarios here it says the domestic dishwashing machines shall discharge indirectly through an air gap or air break into a waste receptor in accordance with section 802.2 or discharge into a y branch fitting on the tailpiece of the kitchen sink or and this is our case the dishwasher connection of food waste disposer. You see it right there highlighted in yellow. So we're, that's our scenario there. So that is allowed, okay? And then the next sentence, it continues on. It says, the waste line of a domestic dishwashing machine discharging into a kitchen sink tailpiece or food waste disposer shall connect to a deck-mounted air gap or the waste line shall rise and be securely fastened to the underside of the sink rim or counter. So in this case here, you can see we have our hose is mounted uh, what they call, you know, the high loop. So it's mounted up the side of the cabinet all the way up to the bottom side of, of the countertop. So this is allowed. Now in some states this is not allowed. Some states, I think like Minnesota and Wisconsin, they require you to have those stupid, ugly ugly air gaps that go on top of the counter because they want the thing to be breathing above the level of the flood plane of the uh, of the sink so whatever the top level where you can where you could possibly have a flood coming out of the sink so this now places it somewhere between 36 and 40 inches above the floor instead of 32 inches above the floor but to me it, it doesn't matter and then why would you want that ugly thing anyhow when the current way of doing things is perfectly acceptable. Alright, so I just wanted to show you this part is what's important. So each manufacturer will show you this grayed out zone here. That's the only area where you can cut and pass, you know, drill holes here and pass your hoses and electrical wires through to the side of your cabinet. Because if you go higher, like this one here says what, seven, seven and three quarter inches. If you go higher than that seven and three quarter inches, and try to pass your hoses through, now you're going to bump against the side of the, of the dishwasher and you're going to be in a bind because what are you going to do? Everything will, will be bunched up. So you can't do that. So they tell you to keep everything usually, this is typical, seven and three quarter inches by four inches away from the wall. So as long as you're within that square that you see on the left side, there, that's where you can drill. And then here they show you, of course, to tape the hoses and the, the electrical wires down. You'll see later on here, I don't adhere to this um, instruction here because I prefer to tie everything to the bottom of the unit first while the unit is propped up so I can get at it. And then I, I shove the machine in here, feed the hoses through, you know, and just pull them in from the inside of the cabinet. So now I'm getting ready to push the dishwasher back in place there. And you can see, I just find it easier to route all of these lines to the bottom of the dishwasher before I even put it in. The instructions, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of opposite what the instructions show you to do, because I find it to be much easier. The instructions tell you to take those things down on the floor ahead of time, and then they want you to get down on your stomach in front of the dishwasher to do all the work in tying them up, and I say the heck with that nonsense. All right, so let's push this into place now. Okay, now each dishwasher manufacturer is different on where they want you to take your measurement for level. This particular one wants us to put it right here on the bottom of the, the door when you open the door. And as we look, you can see it's a little off. So we're going to pull it back out and adjust the leg so that this is nice and perfectly centered. And likewise, they want you to pull out the rack 
and put this onto the bottom of that track there on the right to see if it's level front to back. So let's go ahead and pull out the back of this um, lower drawer here. So there's our spirit level there and you can see we're pretty level front to back there. So the only thing we need to do is adjust the side to side from left to right. Okay, so if you're wondering why it's not level, that's because the floor is not level. See that? So even though I had it out here, and it seemed level over here, by the time you move it back over there, you can see there's problems with the level of the floor there. So we'll just make a very brief adjustment to level out this dishwasher. Okay, so we made some adjustments to the right side legs, and now our dishwasher is level side to side. We can screw it to the underside of the cabinets there, the, the kitchen counter. Okay, so, so now we are fully attached to the bottom of the kitchen counters here. Alright, so next I put the hose clamp onto the end of the drain hose here. And I usually use a 5 uh, This is a nut driver here. This is a lot better than using the Phillips head screwdriver. So I'm just going to insert this on there for now. Get it in there all the way. Okay, so before we explain uh, the whole setup of the high side loop now that it's installed, I just wanted to uh, remind you that if you haven't subscribed to us yet, this would be a great time to. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up down below there to let us know that you like us. And uh, when you hit the subscribe button, be sure to hit that bell icon so that it will alert you every time we upload a video. We have over 250 videos on this channel showing you all sorts of failures to repair around your house, all sorts of remodeling, and, you know, we do really, really deep engineering and stuff, too. So you'll definitely want to come back and binge watch some of our other videos. All right, so let's get into the high side loop explanation. Okay, so there's your big picture look here. We've completed the installation of the high side loop. So let me just walk you through it. So the drain hose comes here from uh, the dishwasher there, and it goes up and you can see I've got it strapped in two places to make sure it stays straight up and down. And then it comes all the way up here. Goes up underneath the counter. See how it goes all the way up to the counter, 32 inches up. Turns around and comes back around. And I've got this last strap right there holding it. Okay, and then it comes over here and I just have it uh, zip tied in two spots there to the bottom of the, of the garbage disposal to hold it in place there. And then it comes around and over to the left. So this is a little bit more complicated than normal because in most cases, uh, if your garbage disposal is facing this way, the dishwasher is on the left and comes in and it would just go straight into it. But in this case here, we're different because our dishwasher has to be on the right. So we brought the hose in around this way. And so I'm very careful not to kink it right there. You don't want to pull this radius here, you don't want this radius to be so tight, full of tension, that it pulls this thing and kinks it. Because remember, that's part of the hose as well, so you want to keep that like it is. So, the reason why I put these two zip ties here is so that when we come right out of the port on the side of the garbage disposal, we want to immediately start going up. We're going up, we're going all the way up, 32 inches, and there's our loop. So now, if you ever had a, a sewage backup, it's probably not going to make it past this joint right here. It'll, it'll come out the port maybe a little bit and maybe come up a little bit like this, but it's not going to go all the way up. So that's our protection from any type of sewage ever backing up into the dishwasher. This is why I spent so much time on this because it's, it's very, very important. And I can tell you when you pay, what is it, 150 bucks for the big box stores to come and install it for you, they don't do it like this. I got news for you. So... This is something you might want to do yourself, save the money, and as long as you watch this video here, you'll do it. You'll get it done right, too, okay? So we're going to plug it in, and we're going to test it. Okay, so when you go to plug in the, the dishwasher here, of course, there's only one other outlet here, but test them and make sure, because it, do, it does matter which one, because one of these is the garbage disposal, and it's controlled by the switch. So I've already tested it, and I, I know that this bottom one here is, is supposed to go to the dishwasher. Okay, 
Then we'll tie up all of our cords here. Okay, so now, before we test the dishwasher out, what we want to do is, see how it wiggles a lot down on the bottom here? So now, then, now that we can reach the, the bottom of the feet here pretty easily, we're going to take our channel locks here, or you can use an adjustable wrench, and we're going to just slightly tighten it up a little bit, just to make it snug, just to put pressure going like this, so it'll be against the floor, so we'll go ahead like that, and we'll just turn it a little, little bit, maybe half a turn at the most, just to give it some force up against the tile there, and then we'll do the same thing with this one over here as well. Go. Alright, so now we're going to test out the dishwasher here with two plates that have caked on food. And we'll just stick them in there. And I've got our little soap pod there. And it's important to remember to do a whole cycle on here before you put that black plate back on the bottom there. Because you want to be able to look under there and see if there's a leak. And don't just turn on the dishwasher and after five minutes go, okay, no leak, we're fine because you have to wait until the cycle is complete. You want to know that this dishwasher was successful in discharging everything through that plastic hose that comes all the way in here under the cabinet. Okay? Okay, so I want to show you a, a little trick that a lot of people get this wrong. But whenever you run your dishwasher, you're always supposed to turn the hot water on here first. So make sure that you have hot water coming out here. Because this way here, it makes sure that you've already got hot water coming in to your dishwasher. Because if you don't do this, the dishwasher has to wait until it can heat up that water first. So that uses up a lot more energy and it takes more time. So I always make sure that there's hot water running right there first. Okay, so while the dishwasher is filling up, that's the spot you want to focus on right there, right where your water intake is. So you want to make sure that that's not leaking. You want to feel all around it, make sure you don't feel any moisture at all, not a single drop. Because if there's a single drop, that means there'll be more. So this is the part that is the most concerned to you right here. All right, so right now we saw the water coming in through the hose here. So it was being discharged, pumped out by the dishwasher. You see that little leak right there? That's because we didn't tighten down the nut yet, so let's get that tightened down. Okay, there it is nice and tight. Okay, so now it's pumping water through again on the second cycle. And this time we don't see any water leaking there, so we're fine there. But right now this hose is completely filled with water. And you can feel the hot water too. So at least we know that the discharge part is working just fine. There's no leaks in here. And then when we come back over here to the dishwasher side, there's no leaks down there either. So our cycle was a complete success, there was no leaks, it was perfect, but that doesn't mean you're out of the water yet, because now you still got to open up the door here, and uh, I interrupted the drying cycle, but we want to make sure that there's no water flooded in the bottom there. So you see, you look down at the bottom there, and, and uh, sure enough, we have no water flooded in there, which is a good sign. That means that the dishwasher was able to pump all of it out, and here's our plates, nice and clean. So this was a complete success. And if you found this video useful, uh, we'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up down below. Just click on the thumbs up icon. It lets us know that you like us. And if you have any questions at all, please let us know down below there. Um, we'll be more than happy to answer for it. And make sure you hit that subscribe button while you're here so you can come back and binge watch over 250 videos that we have on different subjects of remodeling around your house. And make sure you hit that bell icon right next to it. That will alert you every time we upload a video so you never miss a single so that's it for this week, folks, and we'll see you on the next one.